Chapter 30, The Disappearing Shed. Squawk! The pelican signaled that another terrible day at the cruel school was about to begin. Larka lay at her bed, leaning out of the caretaker, listening out for the caretaker and that jingle, jangle, jongle of his keys. She heard them echoing down the hallway and instantly leaped to her feet. Metal unlocked Larka's door and stood in the doorway with the jumble of keys hanging from his belt. Ka-chunk! Larka seized her chance. She hurried, hurled herself at the caretaker and grabbed him tight. Her eyes were right where the keys dangled. What do you think you are doing? He thundered. <laughs> Thank you so much for being the best caretaker in the world, she exclaimed. Get off me! Off, off, off! What's wrong with you? Nothing. I just thought you needed a hug and someone to tell you what a wonderful job you are doing here, making us kids all feel so welcome. I do nothing of the sort. Then, as quickly as Larka had hugged him, she let go and took a pass away from him. Goodbye, she said. What do you mean, goodbye? You can go now. Goodbye. You are bonkers, and you are too kind. The girl's hand was closed tight, and she left her room. She allowed herself a secret smile. The next, instead of following the pack of kids to the dining hall, Larka peeled off in search of worms. However, when she pitched up at his shed, she realized something diabolical had happened during the night. The shed wasn't there. It had been perched on the edge of a cliff. Now it was gone. Looking down at the ground, she could see a large patch of earth ma marking its spot. A shed doesn't just disappear, she said to herself. Larka peered down over the ledge of the cliff. To her horror, she spotted shards of wood scattered over the rocks below. It was a very long way down. The length of a couple of football pitches, at least, and the shed must have exploded upon impact. Now the cruel sea was claiming it. Swoosh. There was no way anyone could survive that fall. As the dawn sun rose over the sea, beads of beads of tears welled in the girl's eye. Oh no, this is too much. I can't take any more. Not poor lovely worms. Yes, came a voice from behind her. Can I help you? Ah! She screamed and leaped back. It was only worms, but Larka had leaped so far back she lost her balance. Frantically, she waved her arms in the air like a bird who had just hatched trying to take flight for the first time. Help! She cried, feeling herself tumbling backwards. Fortunately, Worm shot out his grubby hand just in time and grabbed Larka by her collar. Gotcha! He exclaimed. Slowly, he pulled her back to safety. Once they'd taken a few steps away from the edge of the cliff, the girl said, I thought you were dead. I thought you were dead too, came the reply. We are both still alive. Just. What happened to your shed? Well, began the gardener. Wormy often needs to take a little whittle during the night. He fished his pet worm out of his pocket. Sometimes she wakes me up three or four times, so as luck might have it, I was out giving Wormy her nighttime whittle in the bushes over there, you know, to give her some privacy. I can't go if someone's looking. The girl rolled her eyes. This man was bananas. I heard my shed crash on the rocks below with all my precious belongings in it. Oh no, poor you. What was in there? My tea mug. Anything else? Worms thought for a moment. No. Oh, so your mug got broken too. Your mug was already broken. The handle had come off, but there was little hope for it now. He muttered, peering over the edge of the cliff. No, poor mug. Did you see anybody out there last night? There was a thick fog last night, remember? So no. But how else could the shed end up all the way down there? A free gust of wind? Or something more sinister, said Larka. Come on, let's not waste any more time. Let's go straight to the headmistress and tell her everything. What about your boot? My boot can wait, said Larka, limping off with one boot on and one boot off. Chapter 31. Do Not Disturb. The headmistress's office was tucked away high up in the one of the turrets of the castle. Worms and Larka crept up to the stone staircase to the top, dodging the rats just as Worms had said. There was a sign on the headmistress's door that read, Professor Doctor, do not ever, ever, ever disturb. The sign had been hanging there for so long it was furry with dust. I'm pretty sure it's telling us not to disturb, whispered Worms. I know, snapped Larka. But the sign looks like it's been on her door for decades. It's about time someone disturbed her. Why is her name Doctor, too? Professor Doctor is Doctor Doctor's mother. So that's how her daughter got the job here. I am sure. Why isn't she called Professor Professor? That would be silly. I know lots of Doctor doctor jokes, but I have never heard of a professor-professor one. 
Dr. Senior became a professor, but Dr. Junior only managed to be a doctor and had to be called Dr. Doctor. Well, go ahead and knock there if you really, really want to, said Worms. And I will wait around the corner just in case she really, really, really doesn't want to be disturbed. You work here, you can knock, replied Larka. I am not knocking. Somebody's got to knock. Yes, you, Larka sighed with frustration. Hmm. <laughs> then, just after a few moments, she suggested, how about we knock together? Good plan, exclaimed Worms. You first. No, together. One, two, three, knock. Knock, knock. After a second, Worms hissed. The professor's not in. Come on, let's go. We should go in and look for her. No, we should not. And what's more, we can't. We don't have the key. Lark smiled and opened her hand. Oh, yes, we do. There in her sweaty little palm was the brass key. Where did you get that from, he demanded. Um, uh, borrowed it from metal. <clears throat> borrowed it? Yes, I would never steal. I'm going to return it at the earliest opportunity. Larka wasted no time and unlocked the old wooden door. Click, crack. The door swung open to reveal a study that at the first sight looked as if it were covered in snow. Except it wasn't snow, it was thick with dust and cobwebs. Seriously spooky, whispered Larka. Right on cue, a bat flew straight across her face. Eek! Ugh, she cried as it flapped past her and escaped out of the study. Let's go, hissed Worms. Go? We've only just got here, replied Larka. Immediately she began tiptoeing around the office. There were piles and piles of paperwork and an old oil painting of the smiling professor with a sour-faced doctor doctor when she was a little girl and a globe depicting the solar system which Larka thought was super cool. Scratch, scratch, shh, she shushed. What? hissed once. I can hear something. Probably a rat. Then a ghostly voice came from seemingly nowhere. It's not a rat, it's me, Professor. <laughs> The Lady in the Drawer Larka and Worms trembled to fear. Was the headmistress a ghost? Where are you? called out the girl. They couldn't see her anywhere in the study. I am in here, said the voice. Where? demanded Larka. We can't see you anywhere. Here! Then they followed a tapping sound. Tap, tap, tap. <clears throat> I'm in the cabinet. It's not at every school that you might find your head teacher in a cabinet, but then the crawl school wasn't every school. On one side of the headmistress's study was a tall wooden cabinet. There were 26 drawers, one for each letter of the alphabet. One by one, Larker and Worms began springing them open. Most were jammed full of paperwork that looked as if it had been rammed in at random. Exam papers, report cards and timetables were stuffed in with no regard for filing. However, one of the drawers contained an old lady. The trick was finding which one. All the while, as they searched, the headmistress could be heard calling out directions. Up a drawer, down a bit, left, left, again, right, cold, cold, tepid, warmer, very warm, boiling. Finally, Larka found the right drawer. On yanking it out, she saw a wrinkly, white-haired old lady blinking at the daylight. Jolly super to see you, chirped the headmistress, her pale shrunken head poking out from under a pile of paperwork. It was as if the old school scorecards were her bedding. Are you a new girl? Very new, yes, Professor, replied Larka. If you don't mind me asking, what are you doing in the drawer? Oh, hello, Worms. I didn't see you there. Well, it must have been an awful long snooze. Larka and Worms shared a long, shared a look of utter disbelief. If you wouldn't mind helping an old girl out, asked the Professor. Yes, yes, of course, replied Larka. She carefully lifted the impossibly old lady out of the drawer. It was as if she was handing a, pre a precious antique, which in a way she was. The lady could have been a grandfather clock, as Larka noticed the familiar sound of ticking as they lifted her. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. So how can I help you both this fine and dandy day, she asked. Well, uh, it is hard to know where to begin, spotted Larka, looking to Worms for encouragement. The gardener kept his mouth firmly shut. Beginning at the beginning. Oh, good goody. The pro professor does love stories. Right, well, let me begin with the exploding boy, began Larka. She rattled through the story so far. Bugs shooting up through the library ceiling, the secret cave under the school, the monster mystification machine, the slug monster, Worms' shed being pushed off the cliff, and it all seemed like some tall tale, but was completely and utterly true. She concluded, that's why we knocked on your door, Professor. We desperately need 
to help all the poor children here before it's too late. You are right, something must be done. At once, exclaimed the professor. The old lady went to stand up, but her leg fell off. Clonk! I didn't know you had a false leg, said Worms. Nor did I, replied the professor. Worms and Larka shared a concerned look. Would you like us to help you put your leg back on, asked Larka. No, 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 no fuss. Just pop it on in a drawer so I don't rip trip over it. Worms shrugged and did what the professor asked. He picked up the metal leg and put it in the cabinet. I, uh, I put it under L for leg, he said helpfully. Thank you, Worms. Well, young lady, continued Professor, what have you told me about the going-ons here at the cruel school, especially all that involved my daughter? Doctor, Doctor, is absolutely shocking. What should we do, asked Larka? Put down some slug repellent powder for the start. He was a really big slug, said Worms. Then we need a really big tin of slug repellent powder. We can't do that. He's my friend. What about your daughter, asked Larka? I'm sorry to say that she seems to be behind all this. Let me give that girl of mine, of mine the sternest of stern. Talking to. Now you two run along and please keep all this under your hat. I'm not wearing a hat, remarked Worms, looking at the mop of his head on his head. I mean, don't tell a soul and do close the door and your way out. Toodle peep, toodle peep, toodle peep, toodle peep, toodle peep. <coughs> Chapter 33. We'll read this next time. A Circus of Stinks.